Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons, and we're going to talk about the announcement from Hasbro that um, that the OGL 1.0A is irrevocable, will be left untouched, and will be... Um, and the SRD will be released. I think it already is released under Creative. Uh, they they just released it under Creative Commons, right? So huge event, huge event, right? And so what I want to talk and and what I want to and this is not the end of the 2023 manic panic, in my humble opinion. What this is, but it is it is a huge huge event because what it really is is it is a very significant, really very real. Um, release of the pressure valve because there there because there was tremendous pressure right and so what I want to do is I want to talk about the 2023 manic panic other people had different names for it um, dungeons and discourse called it the OGL scandal right um, many others talked about it as a break of trust with with wizards of the coast right and and Hasbro and um, but the reality is, I, I want to talk about the event itself, the the one the the event itself, and I want to talk about the meta of it, right? Um, so let, let's get into it. So first of all, the 2023 Manic Panic, which was an absolutely uh, highly dramatic res- of it was. So what what happened? What happened? Let, let's yeah, I'm going to give my quick uh, redux of it. All right. So uh, so basically. I think this all triggered off on January 3rd and it ended on January 28th. And during that time, here's what happened. Um, Hasbro was like, we want to change the OGL. And so they drafted a new copy, the OGL 1.1, and they sent it to no less, they sent it to um, about a dozen and a half uh, companies that were making over $750,000 a year on OGL content. One of those companies or more leaked it Right, and and in my humble opinion, we don't know if they leaked it the way it was written, or if they added stuff, or if they changed stuff. The reality is, in my humble opinion, you're still looking at nothing but a leak, right? We really, I don't know if we've really ever seen the real document, right? Like, because and people are like, oh, well, Hasbro confirmed. Hasbro did not confirm the leaks. What they said is, a whole bunch, you know, some of our documents got out. Here's our response to the response to that, right? Oh, and so once the and then so basically. The OGL creator community, the OSR, and uh, the or uh, actually the OGL and the OSR immediately responded to the leaks, right? And you know, uh, and immediately started saying D and D be gone, right? Saying we want to end Dungeons and Dragons, right? Uh, and so there was so so Hasbro's like we want to change we want to change the OGL, and then the OGL and the OS OGL are creators and the OSR. Many members of those groups were like, we would like to end Dungeons and Dragons forever. That was their response, right? And everybody was like, whoa, is this what we're talking about? Like, the end of Dungeons and Dragons, literally D&D be gone? Like, the obliteration, the destruction, like, literally wiping D&D from memory, everything? No one gets to call themselves a dungeon master? It was it was incredible. It was a, it was a way overshoot, an incredible overreaction from the OGL and the OSR. And it sparked the orc, right? And so... Uh, this group of people are like, "Hey, we want to make, we want to make, and we want to make a forever OGL, and we're gonna marinate it and start it with the most, with the word that just echoes hatred since, uh, you know, since um, Tolkien created it, and you know, since Tolkien used it in his seminal work, and then uh, since it caused massive problems in D and D, let's call our forever OGL banner Orc." And tell everyone, if you got prejudice and hatred, this is the place for you. So that came next, right? And then, uh, and then, everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, we absolutely despise Dungeons and Dragons and Hasbro. Where do we go?" And everybody was like, "We know. Let's go to Pathfinder 2. That absolute dumpster fire that Cody from Talking Twenty Taking Twenty got hundreds of thousands of views because he said it sucked two years ago, right? Like, and this was after a year and a half of playing it." And they gave him all the books for free, or like, like, and so, and you were, and you're just looking at this, and you're shaking your head, like Pathfinder Two is going to replace Dungeons and Dragons. It could even replace Dungeons and Dragons when it was put in front of everybody, and everybody swiftly, very swiftly, 
very pointedly ignored it, and then multiple sources said, yeah, this this game is an absolute dumpster fire and is worse than player uh, uh, Pathfinder 1, and even most Pathfinder 1 people would not touch that thing, right? Like, So it, it's just, it is astounding to look at what's happening and, like, you're like, really? Is this, like, is this where we're at? Like, you know, Pathfinder, Pathfinder being looked at as a savior. So it, it was, it was an incredible ride, right? And then, um, finally, um, you know, this whole thing lasted from January 3rd all the way up to, um, January 28th. It was about one month. And at the end, um, Hasbro was like, oh, in, in my humble opinion, their read was like, whoa, you know, we can't trust the OGLers. We can't trust the OSR. We can't trust the Orcs. We, um, and, oh, and I forgot. The OGLers and the OSRs and the Orc were so effective, right? They were like, hey, look at this. We got eight months of Pathfinder books in a warehouse. We sold them out in two weeks. And Hasbro, their response to that, in my humble opinion, was like, oh, let, holy cows. We're not going to be able to sell Dungeons Dragons books, right? Because everybody's behind Pathfinder now because because of the hatred being spewed by the OGL, the OSR, and the Orc. Let's fire a thousand Hasbro employees. So the OGL, the OSR, and the Orc, in my humble opinion, their greatest, like, their greatest damage was literally the loss of a thousand employee, Hasbro employees' jobs. Like, and it was one-two. Like, it was like a one-two punch. It was like, hey, everybody, the world's cracked in half. Nobody's allowed to buy, read, own, you know, buy, own, read, run, watch Dungeons & Dragons huge calls for boycotts, uh, thousands of people saying, go in and immediately delete your account, right, for, um, for D&D Beyond, burn your digital books, and Hasbro was like, you know, we don't even know if we're going to be able to sell our books in FLGSs, we, we're going to have to get rid of some employees, and that's, and so, so the, the most dramatic damage that the OGL, the OSR, and the Orc did was to get a thousand people fired, um, from, yeah, literally a thousand people fired from Hasbro, right? That's a real lasting, horrific, like, damage that came from, uh, you know, from this entire, from the, de that, that is the greatest damage done, in my opinion. No, actually, I think there's things that were worse than that. That is a horribly horrific outcome that came directly from the, uh, the, in my humble opinion, directly from the OGL, the OSRs, the Orcs delivering on their promise to D and D be gone, D and D to get rid of it forever, permanently, fully, right? And and their their greatest success so far was getting a thousand Hasbro employees fired. That that is like unbelievable, right? And in my humble opinion, that was their greatest damage, right? Oh, man, it, it's, it is incredible just to see what happened, right? So that's the breakdown. That's what happened, right? And and after all this was said and done, Hasbro did not look at... It. This is the last thing uh, I'm going to say, and then I, I want to take a look at, at the speed, the scale, and the scope of this, right? So the last thing was, you know, um, was Hasbro going, holy cows, you know, like they're going to burn everything we are to the ground because we tried to, you know, to change the OGL, change the OGL, like, which, like, and no one expected that the OGLers, the OSR, and the Orc would respond like this, they, no one, no one thought the discourse would be like, Hasbro's like, we'd like to change the OGL, and then the OGL, the OSR, the OGLers, the OGL creators, the, the OSR, and the Orc would be like, we would like to end you forever, D&D be gone, right, like, it was not, like, it was, it escalated so fast, and the community's response was so horrific, Right, that it, I think it just shocked Hasbro into fear. And at the end, this OGL 1.0, like we're gonna leave it untouched. It's irrevocable, and we're gonna do, uh, and we're gonna make the SRD. I think this this was 100% responding to not to any advocacy, but to a threat. Right, like it was like, it was it was like you know two partners when they're together, and one's like, I'll end this entire relationship. Like and like a me like. You know, there, there's discussion and the person's like, hey, I don't like the way you handle this. And the other person's like, let's talk about divorce, right? I, I want the house and you can get the dog, right? Like, and I think Hasbro was just shocked. They were just like, whoa, what just happened, right? You know, and they and they were right to be shocked because the threat was so outrageously overboard from 
from material that was never even leaked to the community, that, that was never even given to the community. It was leaked from a different source, right? So like, now, that's what happened in my humble opinion. Every word of that is my humble opinion of the events, right? That's how I see it. And guess what? All of this is frame. All of this is frame. All of this is frame, right? You ask Hasbro what's gonna happen? They're gonna have a very curated list of events that are, are incredibly corporate. Because guess what? Hasbro is a corporation, right? You ask an OGLer, and they're gonna give you this frame that says, oh, you know, my my right to copy and insult Hasbro was threatened, right? Was it? Did you even ever have, have that right? There were people who were saying the OGL wasn't even necessary, right? Like that, that the OGLers were getting upset about a document that they didn't even need. That was openly discussed through its entire thing, right? Like, you know, one of the things that like, there was all this, this focus and people were like, this document isn't even needed. These people could have, could have done anything they wanted without the document, right? Like it was, just, it was openly discussed, right? Whoo, man, it's just, it's so, so much happened. Like, you know, and, um, but it's truly astounding. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the, the one of the things that was most shocking about this was, uh, oh, and frame. I, I'm sorry. I was talking about frame, right? And then if you ask, you ask me, I just told you the events, right? And I'm a, I am, I am a brand advocate. I advocate for the brand, right? Not, not D&D as a, like, not D&D as a legacy, not D, not open D, D&D right now, the one that's awesome, right? The one that has shows coming out, the one that has, the one that has shows on television right now, right? The ones that had, show, had a show on television in 1980, right? Which absolutely zero of its competitors have accomplished. Oh, oh, oh there's there's one tabletop role-playing game show. You know what it's called? Uh, it's called Tales from, Tales from the Loop. And it was so bog awful, I could not even drag myself through all eight episodes. It was a mess. It was so bad, right? Right? And so, like, so these OSRs, these OGLers, they have nothing. Like, there's no movies. There's no shows. They're not name checked. And there's no legacy. There's no frequency of books. There's no, like, it's it's just junk, right? Like, there's, it, it is it is deeply, deeply upsetting. It is just profoundly upsetting to hear, you know, unbelievable, right? So, and but this thing exploded in a single month and just tore the absolute roof off of tabletop of off the entire tabletop role playing game industry and i think people were absolutely shocked how fast all of this happened uh, just how fast all of this happened and and i could tell you right now i know for a fact because no less than a dozen cre creators were like i'll never talk about the ogl again here's my next video about the ogl the ogl the ogl like it like that came from like you should have seen like uh, I'm not kidding like uh, Professor Dungeon Master was the most shocking. Uh, he was like, oh, I'm not going to talk about the OGL. I'm going to give you some crusty videos about miniatures, like three bang 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 right in a row, like you, you know. And it was it was astounding. I even I even have like a comment like this guy was like, oh I'm not going to talk about the OGL and, and like this was like two days before this before the newest information. I was like, dude, if I had a dollar for everybody who said this who immediately talked about the OGL, I could buy a new house. Right, like, and, and he's like, no, no, I'm done, man. And like, as soon as this broke, I was like, dude, you're going to be on tomorrow talking about the OGL. Like, it's like, it, like, it's too easy, right? Like, it's just, it's, it's astounding. But what, what I think really is incredible is just the speed that the thing we have to recognize is how fast this happened. Right. And it's so easy to just point the finger at Dungeon Dragon and go, oh, you guys suck at this. You know, if, if. If I ruled the world, uh, I would. It would be so simple, and I'd do everything right, and no ever, no one would be ever be upset at me, and there'd never be any scandal, right? And I think the thing that astounds me is like, I don't, I don't think the the OGLers, the OSR, and the Orc, right? And I was gonna say, you know, Orc has a lot of work to do. Do they have anything to do now? Does anybody give two craps about the Orc now? Who needs it, right? You want to go, you want to go make content under the Orc, right? Which is two years from being finished. Or if they rush it, you can use the crap version in a year, right? Like, who cares now, right? Like, and that and and that's the other is like, is the orcs like, get out the bricks and the mortar, let's start to build. Wait, 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 nobody needs what we're making. <laughs> like, it's it is astounding, and so I have so much to say on this, but I think the thing we need to just take a look at is one, that's my breakdown of the events. That's what I saw. You know, first of all, and when I end this video, what did you see? What did you see? Like, what is, and it's all frame, 
It's all frame, right? Dot, 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 dot. Here's all the, here's all the points, right? And Hasbro comes in and draws the square around here and gets three of the 10 points. And the OGLers draw the square and they get three of the 10 points, right? And I, you know, a, a brand advocate come in and I draw the points. I'm like, this is what I see, right? nobody's looking at all and there's no uh, there's no objectivity left now to be clear there's no objectivity in any news let alone in D&D right like objectivity was 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 it's gone you know it is absolutely gone right and everybody just takes all the information right and here's all here's all the dots here's all the information and just draw your square right draw your square draw your square it's just a frame right and um it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And and I think, you know, and the OGLers and the OSR and the Orc were like, oh, you guys, it's so easy to laugh at Hasbro and just to mock everything they do. And the thing is, all this is happening at this incredible rate because D&D delivers. It delivers, uh, you know, incredible books. Or it delivers a book that sucks. Even one, right? Like, actually, I you know, 2022, I'll, I'll say it right now. Radiant Citadel most disappointing book on the shelf for me, right? Every other book, absolutely amazing. And Radiant Citadel just, it really, it didn't have a single new magic item, spell, species, nothing. It had nothing for players, right? And I was like, how could you release a book with abs literally nothing new for players, right? Um, just astoundingly bad, right? People talked about it nonstop, okay? For a month and a half. And then when there were great books out, people talked about it for a month and a, for two and a half months nonstop, right? So book, 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 show, 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 movie, 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 movie. product, 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 product. Uh, what you guys, what you OGLers got? What, what do you OSR got? What's the York got? Nothing, nothing. This all happened at the speed of light because that's what D and D works at. It's like fifty people in Seattle, bang, 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 bang. Just do, 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 do. Here, 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 here. Content, content, content. Blessing, 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 blessing. Bad, blessing, 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 blessing. Right? OSR. Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed. Right? I've been covering D&D for six, for eight years. Eight years. I got 4,400 videos on D&D. Right? And I can tell you right now, it moves at the freaking speed of light. And that is proven. One month, Washington Post, NPR, this stuff is real. This is banger content, right? Like, even just the news of D&D &D can, can, you know, push, can get you a 100K sub button, right? Unbelievable, unbelievable. You know, Nerd Immersion and um, Professor DM just did it last year, just covering D&D &D news, Right? And and what can the OS what 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 weight can the OSR hold, right? What weight can the OGLers hold? What weight can the Orc hold? Nothing, nothing, right? Even even our drama outsells their greatest achievements. It's astounding. Like I am, it's truly astounding.